Hello and welcome. We are going to be sharing a fascinating subject and tool today called spiral dynamics. And I promise you will not see reality in the same way, but you'll also be able to see and understand other people's reality and the phases of reality that we all move through at different times in our life in our day and even in our society so if you're ready to have a very deep level of wisdom of something very powerful called spirodynamics let's go so spirodynamics in consciousness what is it really about and why are we talking about it well spiral dynamics is essentially a way of understanding consciousness perspective and human nature and what does it seek to do? Well, it seeks to explain actually how we evolve, how we evolve in consciousness and perception and how we think about things and how we think about things is truly the conceptualization of our reality. It's the way we see the world, the way we see events, the way we see people. You know, when someone says, oh, they can only see things one way, like black or white, up or down, left or right, then that is a conceptualization that locks us into one way of being. And this is how many people, in fact, all of us see the world at different levels. And so Spiral Dynamics really seeks to explain this. And we're going to walk through that. And there'll be an opportunity at the end of this module to actually take a quiz and assess your level. So it's going to get very personal and also very illuminating for you. So what are the limitations of spiral dynamics? Um, well, it's only a tool, right? It's a way for us to get a perspective. It's not absolute truth. Uh, it is a theory, an idea that has been purported by many individuals. And it has an origin that goes all the way back to the research of psychologist Dr. Claire W. Graves. And Graves was researching and looking for patterns of human development. He had a problem. He was trying to understand in his classroom how multiple theories of psychology could have started. Why were there so many different theories about how the brain worked? And why were all of them at some level true? Why did some people have certain ideas or some people have certain vantage points or viewpoints and others had totally different ones? And how did all of these things fit together? Well, there had to be a sort of order to it all. He spent 20 years gathering primary data from thousands of sources. Graves theory became called Gravesian theory and Christopher Cohen and Don Beck, who actually worked with and were students of Graves, coined the term spiral dynamics and expanded the original work in many ways. So what does it really do? What are the big takeaways of spiral dynamics and why are we talking about it here today in the Soul Genius Circle? Well, the idea is that people seek out different things and have different perceptions of reality. I think we can all see that in a myriad of situations on social media, in your work, in your business, in how you're communicating with people. Everyone's going to have different needs. They're going to have different things and perceptions. And this is based on their awareness and development. This is why it can be very hard to get someone to understand a particular viewpoint if they're in one level of awareness. And we're going to talk about those different levels. So the big takeaways are that as we move higher up the spiral, our consciousness and awareness increases. We can actually understand, perceive, or receive a different reality but if we're in a lower level spiral our reality pretty much becomes focused on those lower levels and certain characteristics of those levels and as we go up the spiral our perspective becomes wider and much more holistic and this can even affect our connection to matter reality spirit and even cosmic consciousness because as we go all the way up to the highest level which is coral that we can actually begin to somewhat remotely understand that is a cosmic consciousness a true transcendence so the benefits for our soul genius work is that it can give us a frame of reference 
for where we are and how it can affect us at any given time or situation. So I'm going to be sharing the different levels. I'm also going to talk about it in terms of money because one of the things that I will be bringing in to some of the individual um, abundance flow plans and things that we're going to be sharing with you later on as you continue through the modules is different perspectives based on what level in spiral dynamics you find yourself. Because at each level, you're going to have a certain awareness point. We're going to talk about that. It also gives us a directional guide as to what the next level of perception would be for us and also society. The exciting thing about spiral dynamics is that it infers if not shows that society will continue to evolve upward and become better and more expanded. Um, and better meaning that there is more holistic view, more of a holistic nature to our world and to our reality. And that means more expansion for everyone. It also lets us understand that we can move up and down these levels. So once we gain access to one level, we can still understand and access the previous levels. And we may find ourselves moving through those different levels. But remember, it's not a hierarchy. It's not a better than scenario. It's not like an ascendance level where one person is better than the other. You want to avoid any of those descriptions or inferences. It is simply a way of understanding the reality people are seeing and perceiving where they're coming from. And so this is basically an interesting tie-in because as we did uh, early on in the other uh, section with the heel section, you of course are familiar with the time zero and the gray state, which is right here in the middle. And I believe the way that we evolve through the spiral dynamics hierarchy is actually in grace. And the reason this really touched my heart was it was 2016. Uh, there was a lot going on in the world. There was an election that took place. It was a lot of people that were frustrated with the election and they couldn't really understand why this thing happened or didn't happen. And I am a member of a group called Evolutionary Leaders. And I had some dialogue via email with Don Beck, one of the original founders, uh, who along with Chris Co Christopher Cohen actually founded Spiral Dynamics. And I wrote an article about some of the events of the day. And I talked about through the soul genius understanding that I had, the evolution of a new level of consciousness. And that was actually like right up here. And everybody in this conscious group, or I should say a good number of people were kind of in this sort of place, right? They didn't understand what was going on. And so I shared this new flavor of consciousness where we could have two things that previously had not been available before. And uh, everyone in the group that read the email, it was like very lukewarm. They didn't really get it because they didn't understand what I was trying to say. But one person did and wrote me privately. And we had a, a dialogue about it. And he was very much uh, excited that I was seeing this. And it was Don Beck, who I've shared, is one of the original founders of Spiral Dynamics. And so that's how Soul Genius and Spiral Dynamics, to me, started to have this very interesting interplay. And I, and I think that when you get to any fundamental truth or any fundamental theory of reality that starts to echo in truth, it will start to align with more universal truths. And so what you're seeing is the aligning together of many universal truths like the soul genius, the gray state and truth aligning with spiral dynamics and other things that are sort of the fundamentals of our world. Like when we talk about sacred geometry and the pattern and the pattern of creation, right? These are all breadcrumbs and underpinnings to our reality. So when we're in the gray state, we're able to actually ascend up these levels, okay? And this is really important because when we do the work at time zero and getting to the freedom process, we actually jump to this level yellow. Now that's my theory, so um, I am super excited about it. And I wanna talk about the different levels and we're gonna, don't worry, we're gonna get more and more into these levels. So you're gonna understand them very, very thoroughly. You'll also get a chance to see what level you are. It's very exciting. So the first level is beige. And this is really the level of survival, nature, and reflex. If you can imagine early man or an animal acting just out of this behavioral reflex, that is beige. 
then you can imagine that people got together, they formed groups and, and tribes based on certain types of attributes that brought them together. Maybe it was safety, maybe it was a commonality, maybe it was geography. And they started saying, you know, for us to survive, we're going to have a certain ritual. We're going to do certain things that seem to prolong our life, prolong our safety, prolong our, our food. And so you have that purple level of consciousness. But then there's going to be always, of course, one person or one group that may be stronger or maybe asserts their ego more and rises above that tribal consciousness and says, you know, I don't need to be with all of you. I can actually either start my own or I can be the leader of this tribe and I'm going to lead you, right? So then this is that red consciousness energy. The blue then gets to a point where let's say you've got a bunch of different leaders and they're all equally strong. And maybe they all are sort of exerting their force and maybe there's wars. Maybe there's some sort of great cataclysm that happens because so many of these egoic leaders are fighting. And then someone says, you know what, let's just have rules. Let's have rules around how we treat each other and let's have punishment for those that don't. So rules and punishment and a very rigid structure of punishment and rules becomes the predominant way that society organizes itself and people organize their awareness. And eventually these rules go so far, but then science and technology and rationality starts to come into play and people start to expand their minds beyond just the rules. They may say, well, that rule is okay, but, but science is telling us this, or it's more rational to do this. So people start to follow rules, but then there's this level of adherence to science and sort of like um, the ability to actually rationalize that you should be able to get everything you want and what you want. And so you begin to actually have sort of like your own individual consciousness beyond the rules. And as long as you act within the rules, you should be able to have what you want because it's rational and it's okay, you know? So there's a little bit of um, this separation from sort of like the consciousness of community, the consciousness of what's best for the planet or best for everyone. It's more about, hey, if I can get it, if, if, if it's rational and I know how to do it, I'm going to get it and I'm going to enjoy it. It's my time. And then from that, I want you to imagine the 1960s and you have the uh, hippie generation, so to speak, right? The hippie movement. And people said, no, you know, we're going to push back against that. So the orange kind of, it, it's not necessarily isolated to the 50s or the 40s or the 20s because it's been on the planet for a very long time. You know, orange actually would be for probably about 300 years, but that it's more about that contrast between, let's say, the man going to work in the 50s at General Electric moving up the corporate ladder and being very grounded in science and rational thinking and the upward progression because he wants to retire and, and get a boat versus the green, let's throw away all material wealth, or let's just re-circulate um, it. Let's be more diverse and earth-centric and, you know, let's do away with all of these systems that are controlling everything. And so the green is very much about that. It's, it's really focused on that. Now, above that is the yellow, which is a very interesting consciousness. And it's all about integrative, in, being able to integrate all these other levels. Now, once you get to the yellow, you actually get into what's called the tier two. And we're going to be talking about what is tier two, because tier two actually is not necessarily better than these, but it actually operates um, without any separation. Um, these tend to operate in their own silos. They tend to create their own divisive groups. They tend to create their own walls or barriers. So you'll see these groups fighting among each other. Okay. So for example, you know, the green against the orange, you know, imagine the person who is, you know, the guy about to go to the office, right. And he works for GE. And then there's a protest of people in the 1960s against GE because maybe GE is doing something with the Vietnam War. I mean, I'm not saying that happened, but let's say it did. So you can see this conflict between the groups. You may have the tribes that are, you know, very much about rituals and certain things that are very important. And then they are, you know, against the groups that are with rules. And they're saying, well, no, this rule that you have violates maybe the earth or this ritual that we do that, that we've done for a long time. So you can see these play out. But when you get up here into this next level, these actually 
are able to see beyond all those individual silos. So they're very empowering. And then you have turquoise, which is bliss and universal law. And I'll, and I'll share a little bit about why I saw uh, this yellow energy. I didn't know that's what it was, but that was what I had written in the article about. And this had to deal with the situation that was going on in Brexit. And I, and I mentioned very much in the article that <clears throat> now we have this opportunity to have sovereignty, but also collective love, that we can have both. And so a lot of the people that read my article that didn't understand it, they were very much in this collective state where it's like we all have to be one and we have to subvert our own sovereignty, our own choices for the group. And I thought to myself, I said, well, that's a really, you know, that makes sense at the surface. Like it sounds great. We're all going to be, you know, holding hands. But I was like, do, do in spirit, do we really need to do that? I mean, if we are born with it, with our own individual spirit and who we are, are we really designed to just let that go so that we can all be exactly 100% like everyone else? Didn't make sense to me. I said, what if there's a new flavor on the planet? And I uh, com compared it to ice cream. And so what if there's a new flavor where you can be sovereign in your own choice and your own humanity, as long as you don't hurt anybody. But you also have collective love. So in this level, it was like, oh, you can only have collective love or nothing else. And if you, you know, feel that you want to do this or you want to have freedom or you want to have a certain right and you don't give it up because the rest of the world doesn't want you to have it, you're bad. And I was like, no, I don't, don't think so. I think we're getting into a new flavor. And this is where Don Beck came in and said, you got it. You're on to something. How do you know this? Well, it's really what we're, we're dealing with in higher consciousness. And so we're going to talk about the different layers and levels. It's fascinating. Um, it is an amazing area of study. It's going to help you understand yourself, but also evolve very quickly. So let's get into the beige, first of all. Um, this is the first tier. Remember, we're going way down. Imagine like the ancient times on this planet. You're going to see how long this energy has been on the earth. And it's still here because we can still get into that fear base, right? So it's a state of nature, biological urges and drivers. It's the physical senses dictating the state of being. So whenever we're like, you know, I'm hungry, so I'm going to be irritable. <laughs> That's pretty much a beige energy. Um, how do you cope with it? Well, natural instincts tend to control somebody who's in the beige energy. So the way they cope with reality, I should say, is their natural instincts. So they don't actually control reality or manage reality reality based on how they're perceiving it manages them and you see people in this state all the time you reflexes respond to conditions they act automatically and the level of self is the instinctive self it's the instinct right and if your instincts are wrong or you're just following that it's very hard to create something lasting with money, I'm going to go through each of these levels because as we talk about aligning to abundance, this fits in very, very importantly. It's just kind of a hand-to-mouth reactionary existence. So if you find yourself like not able to plan for the future, you're doing something out of need. Let's say you've had a shortfall in the month and you say, oh, I'm going to you know, take this one action and you're not really feeling into your wisdom. What do you want to do? Does it really align with who I am? It's reactionary and we all can go there. It's not a great way to build wealth or to really align to what you really are. There's no order or planning. And this has actually been online for 2,000, uh, 250,000 years, beige level. Now, the next level beyond that in spiral dynamics is purple. It's still, we're in the first tier. And this is an awareness. Um, it is still fear based, but. We have this tribal, we have this ancestral customs and allegiance to the group. And this is where kinship offered answers, right? Because of preservation, survival, accumulating resources so that we can all have and be okay. This is where the group took precedence over the self, right? In the other, in the other example, beige, it was just the self, the instinct, what it needed to do. Imagine somebody you know, walking alone by themselves sort of in this wilderness trying to survive. But when you have a group, it's like now we need to do things for the group, which is which is fine. It's a fine consciousness. But in order to do so, there's a lot of collaboration. There's also a very interesting belief in magic, which I think is a higher connection point. Um, I don't know 
what the spiritual beliefs were uh, from the people that created this per se. But I do believe that this group, because of that collectiveness, actually in this consciousness believed in sort of magic, which I kind of do as well. I mean, I believe in sort of that quantum reality magic, but they used it for safety. So it might be like having a spell, having incantation, having a certain ritual to do something. Uh, you can imagine like astrology and other things coming from this because you want to know what's maybe happening in the world with the planets so you can time your life. But this opened up to that alignment of the self to bigger systems that we may call magic. So it's very interesting, tribal customs and ways, traditions, taboos, and folklore. The level of the self is actually a harmonized level with kin and with customs that help survival. So yourself really is aligned with those in your family and in your group to help survival. And with money and creation, it's really more not about creating any money or anything of accumulation or abundance, but really just custom and sustenance. So, you know, you would store up food, you would have that certain amount, your amount of that you would store would be based on what you did last year and what you learned was safe from last year. And you follow the ancestries or the past ways. This has been online for about 50,000 years. And we can also go back to this. Think about if maybe your family has always handled money in a certain way or had a certain money pattern, we can be operating from this level. We all can. If your parents told you this is how we do things, this is how it is, uh, you probably naturally, until you begin to think or want to change, operate from this purple level, particularly if you've all lived close by or you've all helped each other. This very much is that familial pattern when it comes to money. Now, the next level up, imagine, you know, there's one person super strong says, I'm going to lead the way. And again, it's a fear-based type awareness, law of the jungle, the weak serve the strong. You want to conquer nature. This is one where you have a lot of that red energy battling with the green energy because the red energy is not necessarily that we're going to live with nature like the purple might where you realize, okay, nature is our friend. We're going to balance this and we're going to do things. We're going to create like a storehouse so we can have food in the winter and we're going to see when the seasons change and understand what's going on and all of that deep, deep ancestral wisdom. The red says, you know what? We're going to create electricity, power plants. We're going to control nature. This is big part of like the industrial revolution, right? So it was all about that time and that frequency. So it's control and dominion. You have kind of, you can imagine like the age of monopolies, egocentric and impulsive, massive accumulation just to accumulate just because you want it and you're impulsive with it. There's no guilt. But there's a desire to conquer. Now we can all have this too. We've all probably had those times where we want to buy that thing because we just want it. We have this desire to overcome. And this energy I'll talk a little bit about because you'll find it um, in different times in your life, um, especially maybe when you really have to get something done and you really are determined. This energy can be useful to you for very specific things as long as you don't get unbalanced with it. Um, it's an egoic energy, you know, like let's say – uh, you have a big deadline, a test that you know you or you got to study for, and you're somebody that always gets A's on tests, and you've built that up as your identity, which it's got its limitations. You may put too much pressure on yourself, but it also is a way that you probably are going to stay at a certain level because of that identity. So again, it has a function. It's not always negative, but it can be limiting if it causes you pain and distress. But you may go there in different situations. So you got to study for that test. You're like, hey, I've got to do this. I got to set aside the time. I can't go have fun with my friends. I've got to do this. And I'm going to think about myself and do it. And you conquer. You conquer the test. Money and creation, though, it wants everything now. It's very much about now, now, now with really no limits. Um, also can be very unbalanced energy because it can use force and cunning to get what it wants. And it's been online about 15,000 years. So this dates way back before any industrial revolution. Think back to times of kings and lords and, and crusades and battles. Even the Catholic Church saying, this is the way. We're going to, with sword, convert people, right? A lot of blood has been spilled because of this energy. So it it is definitely something you see in today's world as well. Go to the inner city where people are 
having to live in this law of the jungle. Go to a store on Black Friday where people are fighting over things, right? Go to, you know, little kids who also go through this at a certain age where you have a group of kids, maybe six years old, and the strongest one sort of rules the playground or picks the team. You know, this energy is with us and you will find people who are operating out of that and they are in fear and they just want a way to see that they can actually persevere, right? And not be dominated or lose. And so that's the other thing. If you're having money challenges, very easy to get into this red level. Now the next level up is blue. And blue is, again, kind of like a fear-based, rule-based type of awareness. Um, it's all about authority and rules. So A follows B and then follows C. It's like this pattern or order to the world. Um, and people who are in this blue state, they definitely follow rules for the reward and they avoid punishment. So if you tell a person who's in a blue type of energy that this is the new law or the new rule, they'll be much more likely to want to follow that rule. And if you tell them that if they don't follow it, you know, their their community will see them as a rule breaker, they'll definitely be much more willing to want to follow that rule. Now try to tell that to somebody, let's say in green, who maybe their identity is that they don't follow the rules, that they'll break a rule if it's better for the planet. They'll be like, I don't care, right? But if you tell them it's good for the planet, they'll say, oh, okay, then I'm going to do that. So it's really also about Figuring out when you meet people, where are they at? Very profound. How does this group cope? Well, they cope by following the rules. And maybe you know people in your life who they feel like as long as I follow the rules, I'm happy. I, I did all I could do. And you may find this as well in your life because there are going to be those people who feel like as long as I do what's right and what I think is right and what the rules have said, I'll always win. This can also hold people back um, because sometimes imagine you've always done business a certain way. You've always seen the world a certain way. When the sixth wave begins to come in and so much radically changes on the planet, these people and all the other levels are going to have a very hard time because the world's not going to be the same. People in this level feel a lot of guilt when they don't follow the rules and then they'll follow rules from that point forward to avoid the guilt. The level of the self is um, that the rules govern the self. There is no transcendent self. There is no self beyond the rules. The rules govern the self. And imagine, um, let's say, if you have the saint sinners type of mentality and, you know, the church, let's say, governs who you are, what you are. You know, you, you, you go through spirituality through this one way. You go to church you pray in the church and that's where you experience whatever you experience, but not outside or not in the way that this other new age person says, because your level of self is governed by these rules. And for money and creation, it's, it's very good in some respects, but limiting. So there's a lot of discipline around the rules. So imagine the good part about this is for that blue energy, which we can all use in our lives might be all right, we're going to save 10% of our income every month and we're going to set it aside without any ego, <laughs> without any uh, connection to what our family did or any of that dynamic, right? We're just going to do it, right? No matter what we feel, we're going to do that discipline and then we are going to do that every single month and that discipline is great. But let's say the market changes or your business changes. You've always done things in a certain way. You've always done X, Y, Z. And now you stay in that box and that box no longer exists, right? So it has a double-edged sword. You want to be flexible. And um, you also could follow the only self you've known. So it's very hard to reinvent. If someone says, I'm a lawyer. I dealt with this when I was a lawyer moving out of that genre or I'm an accountant, I'm an engineer, and I was at IBM for 50 years, and that's what I did. And so everywhere you go, you're holding that identity, and you can't reinvent yourself. So it's been online, though, for a very long time, 50,000 years. All right, so orange. Now we're moving up a little bit, and I want you to imagine sort of in your mind what an orange would look like. Um, this is more about competition and risk-taking. And again, 
It's based on fear because these lower tier levels are more fear-based. A lot of the stuff we're doing is to avoid certain types of outcomes we don't want. Competition and risk-taking uh, is very key with Orange because at Orange, you, you realize that as long as you play within the rules, it's not just about the rules. It's about actually being pragmatic, having initiative, understanding science, kind of taking that lead and realizing you can create the things you want. An orange person um, could be very competitive. They're not going to break the law, but they're going to actually uh, be focused in on using the system in the most logical way to get what they want. Um, there's also, though, some attributes of strategy and self-reliance in an orange. There's an adherence to science and progress. And part of that progress is being able to achieve and move up the status, right? So the orange is very much about competing. Maybe it's more materialistic or focused in on uh, the things that they can achieve and create, almost like if achievement is some sort of like an innovation to them. And there's an accumulation desire, but there's also a lower level of wisdom. There's a discarding of the old ways. This has been online for 300 years. So now think about, you know, going back to, let's say, the 1700s and, and the mercantile exchanges and the shipping routes and all of the uh, exploration of the new world. All of that was this very, very strong level of orange and people were in, using science, using science to circumnavigate the globe, but they also had their own initiative to actually move forward, right? So they weren't just in that rule-based state where the king and queens controlled everything and the serfs, let's say, just did what they had to do so they didn't get in trouble, right? They actually had this feeling like, okay, I can move forward. And this was important to some degree because it gave people a little bit of that autonomy now to see the next level. The thing is, is that it's hard in the natural flow to see and move up a level. You don't generally skip levels, right? You go up one level and then you begin peeking into the next level and the next level. And uh, that's the difference. Now, when we do our freedom process, I do believe that is a jump to yellow. And I believe people can have huge transformations into yellow. And that's why some of the stories are phenomenal because we're literally able to jump levels in spiral dynamics. So it's kind of like um, a chess move that no one knew existed, uh, which is why I love the freedom process. Um, so let's keep going. Now we're into green. We're still in the first tier. It's, again, it's a fear-based type of energy. But here these folks have a... A good, a good incentive, a good motive, uh, a good heart, right? They want to free society from greed. This energy is about breaking hierarchies, ending oppression, and also there's feelings and affiliation here, which these are all pretty good things. I don't have a problem with green. The way that green becomes inefficient is that if you imagine a bunch of uh, green energy and everyone just sitting around in a circle – talking about their feelings, but they don't actually know what to do or they don't take the steps to go out and actually change the world, right? So if there's a bunch of green people or green energy, everyone's sitting around in a room talking about their feelings, but outside in the street, there's people hungry, right? And forget about your feelings and let's go and do something with it. So, that, so you want to really have that action step. So the feelings can dictate over logic. And so this is where we can get very unbalanced with green. We want to stay balanced. Um, we can seek equality and call out inequity. And the level of the self is very sensitive. So you can get also put into this green space where you get so focused in on the sensitive self or that sensitivity and energy that you actually don't have the ability to transcend to the next level and 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 take the wisdom. So I'll give you some examples when we get to yellow, but it's the idea that money should be shared with all. So if you see a lot of people today or at the time I'm recording this that believes like, okay, socialism is the answer. Well, fine, but what about a wisdom that allows the best parts of people receiving what they need and society being just, but also people being able to have 
property as well. Is it possible we can have both? So in the green scenario, not so much. This is kind of where I came in with Don Beck's input uh, on when I wrote that article was that I was beyond the level of a green saying, well, yeah, you are seeing that you wanted this outcome, but I'm going to introduce another flavor that has other levels and tiers to it. It was the example of vanilla and chocolate ice cream is what everyone wanted it green. And I was like, well, what about vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, right? So we can have it all. And this has been online about 50 years, which coincides pretty much to the 60s, 70s, uh, and where we are now. So very interesting. Now, when we move up to the second tier, yellow, by doing the freedom process, you all will be at yellow. I believe this in my heart. 1% of the population, 1% of the population in the world at the time I'm recording this are at yellow. Congratulations. Now, the awareness here is to, you're motivated to learn and synthesize. It's not fear. So it's not reactionary based. It's not because you're trying to not have something bad happen. It's the first level where you're out of that whole reactionary type of mentality. You are motivated to learn and sim- synthesize. You're interested in natural order and hierarchy. You're flexible. You can move up and down. You can be a green and want to stamp out inequity. But you also realize that if you're going to stamp out inequity in the world, we want to also not just white wash or coat everything in the world as being unequal, right? They are things that are equal or they're things that we need to earn through merit. Uh, for example, if we you know, want to say as a green, let's invite everyone out in the street into our home because we should love everyone. That's great. Let's say you have small kids. Let's say that one of those people, they were a sex offender. Is that using wisdom to invite that person in if there's even a chance that they could harm your child and abuse them? So at that level, we can have what I like to say is this definite new awareness. This awareness I call paradox, right? Where you can have one situation that on its face seems like a good idea, but then you have to have wisdom to see where paradoxically it may not be a good idea. And so you have discernment and this is a very wise place. So you want to use the levels when needed, but you also can see that needless fighting is not necessary. So you don't need to fight among the levels, but you can use the levels. You also don't worry so much about the world events because you realize change is constant and planned. It's part of the evolution. And you see multi-tiered solutions. So the multi-tiered solution is if I want to let everyone from the street come stay in my house, maybe instead of, you know, having my kids there, they leave. Maybe instead of my house, I find funding for a halfway house. Maybe I do some research on the people I'm letting in. It's a little bit more of a balanced, wise approach. And the level of self is an integration, right? Because if we're just like in the heart, then we can say, oh, we're going to do everything we can. We're going to give all of our money away, right? But then how are you going to provide more service? How are you going to continue to be stable and calm and create from your soul genius and time zero if you don't have a place to live? So if the heart says, give it all away, the head says, well, wait a minute. You know, if I stay down this course, I can end up, I could give away 50,000, which would be great. But if I stay down this course and I'm integrated and I make a million dollars that I can raise for charity, I could give away a million in two years. And then I would help, you know, X number of people more, 20, more, 20 times more people, more impact. So it's an integration that gives you that wisdom. And for money and creation, it's really interesting because money becomes a neutral tool based on consciousness. So we don't see money as like, it's evil. It's the be all end all. We have to get as much as we can. It's a neutral tool, right? If you are someone that can at least try on the idea that if you're a nice person before you receive money, you're still gonna be a nice person after you receive money. It does not change your consciousness as long as you are integrated and aware when you're receiving it, right? It's gonna bring forward what you already were but you didn't have a chance to express, but it's not going to change who you are. 
And the big underlying idea of a yellow type of awareness is I can manifest anything I want, but I'm not going to do it at the expense of others. I'm not going to do it to break my integrity. And it's leading edge right now. Only 1%, uh, it looks like that percentage symbol needs to be moved around, but 1% of the population are in the yellow consciousness. Now, there's a level above this. I don't go into this into the test because uh, I'm not even there at turquoise. Um, and even above turquoise is coral, which is something we can't even begin to explain. We're not even online yet. It is uh, maybe not going to be here for yet another 10 or 15 years. But turquoise is an awareness, is a transcendent awareness. It's a collective individualism. It's a mystic, a beingness, a knowing versus gratitude. It's a cosmic spirituality, a transcendence energy. And we all probably, if you're in this class, probably have had glimpses of that. I always have glimpses of this when I'm in an activation or some sort of deep meditation or in some moment of oneness, you know, we catch glimpses of turquoise. Soon everybody's going to be just at turquoise, right? And more and more of the society will. So those people in turquoise, they have experiential learning and non-duality experiences. When I was revolution, I wanted to create non-duality experiences every day for people. That's why I added in the activations and energy healings on our calls because I thought, let's have experiential learning. Um, it's also a transcendent consciousness where boundaries end. Um, the level of self is kind of beyond the self. There is no self. You know, there is no rule to the self. It is uh, going beyond the mind, the body, and reality. And money and creation, there, there really is nothing to create. Everything is one. And it's someone in the turquoise is, is very much almost a, a minimalist. Like, there's no desire for anything. They certainly could create it there's no desire for it and that doesn't mean if you get to turquoise you don't have an ongoing business or something you want to do but the purpose of what you're doing isn't necessarily for money you don't necessarily want to accumulate something to to have it you're beyond it right so your joy is coming from something way beyond all that it's truly a beautiful thing to imagine and in this view all is money and i am all if try that on what does that feel like all is money and I am all, right? So now instead of it being outside of you, it's everything and I am everything. So it's this idea of there being nothing separate between me and the tree, the blade of grass, my neighbor, my desires, my wants, everything. All is connected and I am all. So there's really nothing to fear, nothing to struggle, nothing to really want because it's all mine. And this is the rarest at this time of 0.01%. So how does this help us? A lot of different layers and levels. You're gonna to get to figure out your own here in a minute, but we can operate at different levels at different times. And you wanna ask yourself in your day and in your business, and even as you go through this class, because you'll be stretched, there'll be times when you're really questioning, oh my God, can I do this? You know, And you say, what level am I operating at? So if you're going, through and I'm talking about, you know, aligning to abundance and creating a give circle in your business, which you'll be hearing about pretty soon and gifting your gold, you know, creating a, a, a little free product that really gifts the big lessons of your soul genius or what you're here to share, your proficient passion. And you say, oh, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. Oh my gosh, she's really getting into things that I've never done. Well, what level is that? Where are you operating from there? Is that like a blue where, you know, this is the rules. This is what I've done. This is the only thing I could ever do. It very well may be. And so begin to think about that and then say, okay, if I was operating a yellow or higher, how would I see that? All right. What if I said, you know, I am all and all things are me. So of course I could create that. I may not know exactly how, but I'm going to learn and listen and I'm going to allow that to unfold. So very helpful set of tools. Um, you also want to attempt to see the next level's perspective. So a lot of times going forward, I'll mention these different levels, particularly in some of the individual abundance flow plans. You know, I might say, okay, if you're a yellow here, if you're a red here, what would happen if you began to see it differently? What if instead of fighting for money, you had rules about money or you had an awareness about 
uh, maybe a balance where you didn't necessarily have to fight or be in fear about it. It just was. And there were rules that made it always coming in. So looking at the next level perspective can help you to evolve to a higher level. So it's important to kind of question what would the next level be? And then ask also what belief is holding me at this level? You can also go back to the freedom process, work through a belief that you are finding. Like if you say money is scarce, right? And that's your belief. Go back and write down all the times or reasons that money was not scarce or proof that money is not scarce in the world. Because it's actually not at all. It's everywhere. It's just we haven't always aligned to abundance. So that's very important. And the application with wealth is that when we view our world and opportunities from the yellow perspective, which is, I believe, where we get after doing the amazing freedom process, we are aligned with a more holistic wisdom, a more holistic awareness in the world. And that allows us to see not only our own limitations, but also the perspective of our soul tribe and our friends and help them to expand to the highest perspective possible for them at that time. So the, one of the reasons I wanted to share this with you is when you're thinking about your product and what you're going to be sharing, your big challenge that you want to give to the world, maybe you've already identified it, you're working on it, you're working through it. One of the easiest ways to solve a problem is to take any problem and move it through the spiral dynamics continuum and say, well, what about this problem someone is seeing at blue or orange or green and how would this look in yellow how would this look in the yellow perspective right so you can actually just by doing that just by doing that solve a problem for somebody so it's an amazing way to actually shift consciousness and be in a solution creating mode and standpoint and interestingly, society can actually be at multiple levels too. So there was recently an ad campaign uh, dealing with lions that were raised in captivity to be very docile and a tragic situation where they were actually allowed to run free so they could be hunted. And you can imagine these lions were not even able to really have the awareness that they needed to defend themselves because they'd always been friendly to humans. I mean, it's an egregious situation. Breaks my heart. But they were trying to figure out how do we appeal to people in that society so that they stop this activity. And so they started doing surveys and evaluations, much like we're going to do in a moment. And they found that 50% of society in Australia had evolved to orange. So they were very much about science, technology, rationality, uh, moving up the ladder accumulation. 25% were at green. 20% were in the rule base of blue. And only 1% was sitting at yellow. So when they looked at creating campaigns and advertising, they looked at these different levels and they started to work with these different groups. So 50% orange, they would have much more of a campaign for orange people, let's say on the streets or on the highways. And they may also have like a separate campaign for green. So if you are going to say um, to an orange person who's about status, uh, there's nothing glamorous about killing an innocent lion, you know, and you have a picture that really makes somebody think how unglamorous that is. That would definitely get to that perspective of social mobility and, and glamour and hierarchy that an orange might be resonating at. Um, for those people that, let's say, are all about blue uh, energy, which is rules, one of the campaigns they did was showing people that it is now against the law to do this. And those blues follow the law. So they, seeing that, would say, no, I definitely don't want that. Now, remember, the blue energy wants to follow the law. And so the greens, you had another type of energy. And it's very doubtful the greens would be anyone you'd market to anyway because I don't think they're taking part in that. But they had a specific way to enroll those people to help share the message. So it's very key for a lot of different reasons and uh they found of course that less than 0.1 percent were at turquoise and i'm very sure those people were not hunting anything at all 
uh, and that's probably good. So at each level, what you can do, and this is a little bit of the actual spiral dynamic. This is how it looks when you see it in different places. Um, you can ask yourself, how would I see or feel about this one perspective that's holding me back if I was at a higher level perspective in the spiral? So if you're feeling very survivalistic, what would that feel like if you were in the blue or orange or green? And how can I see the perspective of others better? So you may want to take a moment and, you know, pause the video here and just sort of write down these different levels and colors and then say like, where's my family? Where's my friends? You know, where is everybody? You know, I can think of quite a few family members and I love them all, you know, absolutely that are here, right? And so when I talk to certain people in my family, the stories, the things that I see their ears really perk up about sort of this blue authoritarian purposeful type of energy and it's it was hilarious over the last break because i remember having like two different stories and i tested this out and one was you know about sort of like this transcendental experience that i had and the people in my family that you know i knew were in the blue state their eyes glazed over and they walked off but then i had a story about this where something happened and i almost um you know, got shocked because I didn't know that this wire was a hot wire and it was very much of this sort of, it was, it was kind of in this like red blue area and they just absolutely were like all over it engaged. You could see them light up. You could see them like, Oh my God, it's crazy. And it, it's, it's very interesting. So you want to see where they are at. And sometimes I'll go to retreats, right? And we have a lot of people here. And if I mention something that's yellow, like, hey, well, you know, there's a, there's a reason all this is happening. Let me. They, they don't want that. They want to hear that, no, we want to make the world 100% perfect. And we want to have, you know, this utopian world. And we this person's going to bring that world in at all costs. And they don't want to see that there's a bigger things. Bigger things have to happen to bring that world in. We're going to get there, but we have to have this other level. So you're going to see this in a lot of different people in your world. Um, and you also want to think about what is your soul tribe? Where, where are they at? So very interesting stuff. Do that, uh, you know, exercise is really be key for you. And we have another exercise, a beautiful quiz I'm very excited about. Um, it's an assessment tool. It does not mean you are better or worse or good or bad, or you need to work on yourself. It means nothing other than the fact that based on these questions, this is where your awareness level is. And you can retake it as much as you want. You can sort of think, okay, you know, if I went up a level or if I had a more expanded view, don't try to game the quiz. Just answer honestly. You'll get a sense of where you're at and then it will be very helpful. And then you want to be thinking about that next level or taking what you think is really holding you back, going back through the freedom process, <laughs> reworking that, so you can move that into yellow. So thank you for doing this. I look forward to your quiz results and we'll see you in the next lesson. Your quiz is down below.